Welcome to our presentation about Sandbar Breakwater, an innovative nature-based port solution. My name is Bartjo van der Speck and I work for CDR International based in the Netherlands. I would like to thank my co-authors listed here, which represent CDR International, Swazic Hydraulics, Hydrodynamic, Boscalis and Seep Consultancy. The project. The project was done upon request of Dangote Refinery, an oil refinery owned by Dangote Group that is currently under construction in Lekki, Nigeria. A jetty with a roro facility was required for unloading of the project cargo meant for the construction for the proposed fertilizer plant and the other industries. The roro facility was planned near Lekki, 80 kilometers east of Lagos, Nigeria, and it required and required sufficient sheltering to accommodate berthing and unloading of the vessels. First, I want to, would like to tell you something about the coastal environment of the Gulf of Guinea, where the project is located. The Gulf of Guinea includes the coast of Ivory Coast, Ghana, Togo, Benin, and the western part of Nigeria. This coast is characterized by a barrier lagoon complex and consists of low-lying islands and narrow beach ridges backed by creeks and lagoons. The relatively steep shoreline consists of well-sorted, more moderate coarse sand. This coast is subject to a very uniform and unidirectional wave climate. Long period swell waves are generated in the South Atlantic Ocean, arrive in a narrow bandwidth um, and always arrive from the South Southwest. These highly energetic waves induce a large unidirectional eastward sand transport along the complete coastline of the Gulf of Guinea. At, this, at our project area, this reaches almost 1 million cubic meters of sand each year. Any human intervention got, has caused and will cause a rapid and strong response of this coastline. River dams, sand mining, but especially port infrastructure really has left its marks along this coastline. One can see that on a quite large scale, for example, at Lagos, Nigeria. Ever since the construction of the harbour malls 100 years ago, the downdrift coastline at the eastern part of the malls um, suffers from continuous erosion, while at the other side, the coastline has kept accreting. Although the lagoon sand hunger caused a slight natural sand sediment deficit at the eastern part, it shows that the human interruption had caused a massive impact, which is still going on. Just east of the channel, the big land, land, big land reclamation, Eagle Atlantic, and a more, more, slightly more eastward, the big groin scheme, have locally mitigated the erosion, but only shifted the problem more downstream. The same has happened at Cotonou Benin. Ever since that construction of the port, the coastal impact has become very pronounced. The strong erosion along the eastern part of the coastline of the port has led to the development of several coastal protection schemes, including construction of groins, nourishment of beaches, and offshore breakwaters. Nevertheless, erosion and accretion has continued. The groin had the required lengthening, and the erosion had only shifted more downdrift, which we can see in the upper right part of the lower satellite image. Another example at Lome, Togo. The breakwaters of this port have been, have been built back in 1967. Since then, the coastline has kept advancing and advancing, starting very rapidly along the southwestern breakwater. The strong coastline, strong advance has made most of the breakwater armor obsolete. Studies, su studies suggest that the coastline already reached the breakwater band at least in 1992, before bypassing was 100% and stabilized the coastline at least up to 2009. This bypassing led to siltation of the channel and subsequent higher maintenance. To delay this bypassing, an additional spur has been constructed and the accretion recommenced. This can see, we can see in this satellite image that the coastline has reached in 2016 already halfway up to the spur. Well, actually, this accretion has, used, has been used beneficially for the extension of the harbour basin. These examples of Nigeria, Cotonou and Lome show, that, show the huge impact that port infrastructure has on the local coastal dynamics. But on the other hand, 
particularly the port of Lome, provides inspiration to approach port design in a different way by taking nature as the, as the basis, while pursuing a sustainable solution at the same time. This has led to the conception of the idea for the sandbar breakwater, where the natural system was used as a starting point. So based on the lessons learned from the cost impact along its coastline, the use of sand as construction material seemed very obvious. A conventional breakwater would be rapidly be buried by the accreting coastline, making the expensive rock armor obsolete. Sand is abundantly available and quite cheaply sourced nearby. The sandbar, sandbar breakwater has been based on this principle by making the inevitable growing sandbar the basis for the port protection. The key element of the sandbar breakwater is a sand body orientated close to its equilibrium and held in place by a corn structure at the tip of the sandbar. The yellow area in this figure shows the approximate dynamic equilibrium, equilibrium situation where the coastline is perpendicular to the dominant wave direction. As such, this concept minimizes the use of rock material and makes optimal use of the natural dynamics and the material close by. And as we have seen in Lome, Togo, this concept also allows for relatively easy port expansion by extending the harbor basin into the accreted area. Any time of obstruction of the longshore transport, albeit a breakwater, groin of, or revetment, will lead to a disrupted sand balance and will eventually, eventually lead to downdrift erosion, which is inevitable with a port. Mitigation with hard structure may solve the problem locally, but eventually will, eventually will lead to problems further downdrift and will hence not mitigate the net effect. The most natural way to mitigate impact is restore, restoring the disrupted sand balance, and therefore a sand engine has been included in the concept, which provides a buffer of sand and prevents loss of habitat downstream. This sand engine requires, of course, ongoing nourishments to prevent coastal retreat over the coming years. So how did we apply the concept in this project? The concept has been optimized by designing an optimal shape where, where the required replacement of sand is minimized. The design of the initial sandbar shape should use the natural import of sand as much as possible while preventing a breach of the sandbar and thereby ensuring a calm and safe harbor basin. In an iterative way, the most optimal shape was found with the minimal initial placement of sand required and is shown as the red outline in the figure. Nature will shape, reshape the, this to an equilibrium and the expected resulting coastline is shown in blue. This reshaping by nature and the adequacy of the December design is assessed using numerical morphological modeling. And eventually, the red profile has been constructed, as you can see in the satellite image, and nature has reshaped it to its equilibrium profile, as expected, which we can see in the blue line. So how is this realized? This project required a fast construction method, which was fortunately possible with the sandbar breakwater. The workable season is about six months, and the work should be done in, in, in less, than, less than one year. As said, the morphological changes are very rapid. To prevent large morphological changes where sediment can be transported out of the design, a large hopper capacity was being mobilized. Further, a groin has been, the further, the groin has been realized as quickly as possible to prevent sedimentation in the harbor basin and losses of sediment out of the sandbar. After the construction of the groin, the risk of loss of sediment are much lower. And after that, the sand body can be nourishment very easy without losing sand out of the profile. To summarize, the sandbar breakwater is a cost and time efficient solution. The concept makes optimal use of its natural character and abundant locally available sand and littoral drift and thereby minimizes the use and installation of relatively expensive hard construction materials like rocks and concrete armor units. This in turn has led to the minimization of truck movements, 
through the busy Lagos State Road network, minimizing congestion, traffic incidents, nuisance, impact on air quality, and the carbon footprint. The use of sand and the soft character makes a sandbar breakwater an easy, adaptable solution. Maintenance can be performed relatively easy by placing or moving sand to the most critical location. The letter il illustrates the high resiliency and adaptability to long-term climate change-induced impacts and flexibility for future port extension. This is the first developed and construction sandbar in the world. Therefore, this concept is innovative, and this has led to numerous additional research and cooperation with, which, with universities such as the Delft University of Technology. This concept may become a generic port solution in coastal environments like the Gulf of Guinea, with a large unidirectional long sediment transport. And we therefore hope that this concept provides inspiration for further development of nature-based port solutions. Oh, and by the way, they actually already begun expanding. This is an ortho photo of, of, uh, of the sandbar this year, where you can see that the port basin has already ex been extending into the accreted area. Thank you for your interest.